got Metroid Prime Federation Force. So you've been playing a fair <laughs> amount of this, Brian. What do, what do you think of it so far? Yeah, um, so I've played through the uh, the first 12 missions, um, and it is surprisingly fun. Like, it's not, like, blowing me away or anything, but, like, it is a a solid game. And, like, uh, the first thing I thought, aside from, like, you know, this is not the Metroid game that people are going to want, which is the internet backlash you were talking about, mm-hmm. um, the first thing I thought was shooters aren't typically that great on 3DS. And... Uh, it's actually pretty solid. Like, there's some times where I'm like, I wish this was on console instead. But uh, the, like, the controls are pretty solid. The uh, the level design, I would say, is good. Maybe seventy percent of the time. Um, <laughs> what that, more could you ask for? That thirty percent of the time, it, it's like, what were they thinking? Like, there's a boss battle where you're uh, like, he's going towards a, a base, so it's essentially a time limit, and you have to kill him before he gets to the base, and that's really annoying. How much of the frustration is coming from? Maybe when you're playing by yourself, because this game is basically Metroid's Triforce Heroes. It which, is. Kyle, you reviewed, where it's just kind of like smaller, not as small as Triforce Heroes, but just kind of self contained little maps, challenges designed for four player co op. Mm-hmm. And, and like I've started playing it too, and I noticed like in the second level, there's this area where like this whole planet's obsessed with orbs. They all worship uh-huh. orbs and whatnot. And so you have to like free four balls and like put them in little hoops and little holes basically to activate this door. Dan Decker, I'm getting to your weirdo looks in a little bit, <laughs> sir. Uh, anyways, and I was like, God, this is really kind of annoying. And then I realized, oh, no, there's four different paths. If you're playing with four buddies and everybody had a different, like, obstacle in order to free this ball and put it where they want to be, that'd be kind of fun. You'd be like, what are you doing? Oh, what are you doing? What's your challenge? What's your challenge? Mm-hmm. And so how much of it comes from just playing by yourself? I mean, some of it comes from that. Uh, but there's also, like, the one of those orb things where you have to shoot it up the ledge was kind of annoying. Like, I got all the way to the top and it fell off into the lava and I had to start over again. Um, uh, yeah, there's a fair amount of that. Yeah, but that's just a one-off because there's a lot of variety with all these different missions, right? Mm-hmm, there is. Yeah, Al- almost every single mission is completely different, which is kind of cool. Um, and then there's one thing that I really don't like, which there are no checkpoints Ooh, in the missions. So, like, really? if you die, um, like if everyone dies, you have to start over the entire mission, which is a pain. Or if like the objective fails, like there's one where you're like protecting a a, a data thing that's like. Pr- transferring data to your, your ship. Okay. And if the enemies kill or destroy that that uh, computer, you have to start the entire mission over. And of course, that's at the very, very end of the mission. So get like, you know, 25, 30 minutes in. I, I did all the optional objectives and then I failed the mission and had to start over. And none of it counted for anything. And it's one of those things where like, if you were playing with four people and like you died, everyone could hang back and wait for you to respawn, right? Like mm-hmm. it's one of those situations. It's okay. Destiny. It's Destiny, baby. Okay. <laughs> Are you playing this thing, Kyle? Uh, I started it. I got through the training. So okay. I'm really far in. I actually had a question, which does kind of pertain to the training, is I instantly changed the controls because I have a new 3DS to have the, uh, you know, like normal FPS controls. But it sounds like you actually think the motion controls are pretty good. And yeah, I don't. On, right? I, I, so in Splatoon and Star Fox, I immediately minimized the amount of motion control that I used. I don't like the, the turning to aim and everything. But for this, for some reason, it works. Like I'm, I'm enjoying like the because lo- I think it's because there's a lock on button. So there's a lock on right. button. The left, the left. Uh, I don't know. Is that called a trigger? A bumper? Le- left shoulder button. There, there we go. go. We did it. So left shoulder button is uh, lock on to an enemy, and then right is like you can do precision aiming. Yeah. So it works really well in that. And to everybody complaining about the controls for this game, like my hands got a little bit cramped after playing mm-hmm. for a while. I yeah. totally get that. But I mean, think about it. Metroid Prime on the GameCube. That's not controlling like an FPS. It's basically Outside of like a little bit of motion controls, if you want it, it doesn't control that differently than the GameCube version of Metroid Prime. Sure, well, that's a good thing. It's been a while since I played that Metroid Prime, though. Yeah. So I, I can't, I can't remember a hundred percent how that controlled, but yeah. Dan Tech, the second this game was brought up, uh, you rolled your eyes so hard your eyeballs actually fell out of yeah. your skull and rolled across the podcast. I mean, how, tell me about tell me about all the games you've played in that game. I mean, this game. <laughs> no, I haven't played it all. Never will. All right, all right this there you game go. is go. disgusting to me. You're out of your mind. <laughs> um, the fact that it exists. I mean, I, I love Super Metroid. I think it's one of the best games of all time. To see that franchise go to this from that, I just you know, it's disgusting. <laughs> what is an offshoot though? I, mean, I don't care. You I don't, don't care. care. I, I What's the harm of an offshoot? The fact that we don't get an on shoot. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, pop quiz. Here we go. Metroid Prime one, two, and three. Raise your hand if you've played all three of those games. Beaten all three? Yes. Oh, jeez. Okay, exactly. I feel like everybody's in this boat where it's like, oh, it's a shame they're not making a new Metroid Prime. We didn't play Metroid Prime. Wait, I don't, I don't. Who's asking for a Metroid? I Prime? beat three. Not me. You just want two D. I want. I want a two D Metroid. Metroid. Yeah. Okay. Sure. I think. 
I think about this game, and I'm also a little bit of a defender. I played it for maybe like two hours last time. I was like, this is better than I thought it'd be, mm-hmm. uh, for sure. And it gets a bad rap. And I totally get the Metroid fans wanting a 2D game. I would recommend maybe a Metroid 2 remake that might be floating around out there. That seems like a lot of people are happy with <laughs> that we talked legit, about last though. week. It's not legit, but it seems like people are super into it. <laughs> hey, if I don't want to play it, I'm not going to play it. Boom. But to call it disgusting? Yeah, it's it's abhorrent. Why? It's, a talented team, Next Level Games, made a game that's well executed it's for what typical, it is. Just let's take this IP and slap it on something else and see what's. It's just. It's. I don't it's think so. Not cool. I think it's this just, is a case of. It gets a dude not cool. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is a case of. I think it's pretty clear Miyamoto does not necessarily love Metroid. I think all of Nintendo, at least the higher ups, don't understand why the community loves Metroid for what it is. And so, like trying to take something with that IP naturally and squeeze it into something that Nintendo does love, where it's like, hey, get together with your friends. Let's have these little missions, bite-sized missions from the on the go, handheld. Like within that structure that Nintendo forced down for like this is how you can have fun with games and putting the Metroid label on it, I feel like Next Level executed it very well like within that model which is not ideal like i think it's worth looking at it, the game it, you know hey i'm not saying i can't make a judgment on the game since i'm not going to play it i'm saying like i sort of feel like you uh, have it's more about yeah it's more about <laughs> you're not paying attention to what i'm criticizing it's more about the ip you know let's go have a metroid party and a bunch of other stupid offshoots let's get a real metroid Are you, game at the end i'm getting the sense that you're criticizing this game for 2d metroid not existing yeah this game could exist without the brand i'm sure but instead okay. they put the brand That's on it fair. to make it you know, hey, it's a Metroid game, not some shooter thing. And what's the Metroid. harm in just having, you know, a cool sci-fi atmosphere? I would be just as upset if they made, you know, Dark Souls shooting game for the DS. You know, it's the same kind of thing. You don't do that to the brand. You're a big brand guy. You want the holiness yeah, of like, the brand. Yeah, you like know, Slashy Souls, an abomination. <laughs> same thing, right? <laughs> no one's ever mentioned Slashy Souls I have, since I came I'm out. I'm bringing it up because it's the same type of thing, you know. Did you play Slashy Souls? Yeah, I did. It's, dis- it's again, disgusting. <laughs> you take, you take an amazing, you know. But you, you take, played it. Of course. So you can actually criticize it. I, no, again, I, I welcome this. I welcome do you this. understand? I like do you it. understand that I'm not criticizing the game itself? The gameplay could be fantastic. Sure, yeah. let it stand on its own. Well, you rolled your Don't eyes at me when I game. said that it was a good game. I, again, you're you're missing what. But, exactly but wait, 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 I'm no, 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 no. You're, you're you're rolling your eyes at the notion that it could be a good game. It doesn't matter if it's a good so game. that is you criticizing <laughs> my opinion that it's a it, good game. It doesn't matter. It's about the it's. Oh, geez. It's about brand When's, uh, when, holiness. Yeah, let's just make a you know a Zelda party game. Okay. If it's a good game, then why not? I'm kind of in Brian Shay's camp. Like it gets back to I'm, Star Wars I'm prequels, good. I Get guess, where it's like, eh, they're bad. <laughs> no, it the, doesn't ruin the original yes, it trilogy does. for me. It was are you kidding? They they absolutely do. Okay, so this is this is where do you guys stand on that? on spinoffs ruining the whole one. By the way, I feel like this is a topic we might get to it a little bit later <laughs> in this podcast. <laughs> but are you guys bothered by the existence of spinoffs, little fun weirdo things on the side? Mm. No. Uh, no. no. Wait, you're, wait no, now no. you're trying to make the prequels into a little weird spin off thing on the side. <laughs> yeah, I that was an analogy, this but is, now this I'm is, dropping this the Star Wars analogy. Ridiculous. <laughs> but, I, well, that whole concept of like, oh, this ruins everything that came before right. it because it's not as good as the original. No, I, I, that I dislike. But that I'm not saying either. I'm saying about using the brand to just slapping the brand on a title that does that is could exist completely without it, and it's doing that just because, you know, take the brand recognition. I think I, think I would. in to Dan's point, I think it would have been more interesting if they just came up with a new IP. Like, Nintendo seems so scared to do that with this type of stuff, you know? Like, well, they did it with Splatoon, which was great. I know, great. it was great. Yeah, and, and I they feel have, like this uh, almost could have, they could have done that here. But, but if they make a first-person sci-fi game where you're battling aliens, I feel like people would have said, just put the Metroid license on it. There would be the, probably the exact same percentage <laughs> of people what that would say? argue. Not saying it gets to the core of Metroid, but it's like, <laughs> this is so close to the Metroid universe anyway, just put it in there. Things that would never happen for 300, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could say that about like every RPG. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I think that's a that's weird, why Square is putting the Final Fantasy IP <laughs> on every single possible no, RPG. You're right. It's also <laughs> tough to say how people would have reacted. Those mobile games. Do you think? Again, I'll criticize them extremely heavily too. There's three different Final Fantasy mobile games out there right now that are all like just tapping in. Hey, you can get Garland. Hey, you can get Terra. Hey, you can do Lightning. Blah blah blah. There was one that you summons, really liked though. Summons. They. they like which one? There, uh, there was one when I first started that I remember you were There's all There's Record about. Keeper, Exvius, and Mobius right now. But which one do you like? Uh, currently none. <laughs> but what, what, when, we, when I first started, there was one that you liked. Yeah, Record Keeper was the first to hit the scene, and I liked the pixelated graphic thing. Okay. And I mean, before that, we had All the Bravest, but I strike that from the record as even existing. <laughs> I'm more of an All the Bravest guy myself. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like with people so up in arms over Triforce Heroes, I'm sorry, with uh, Federation Force, why do you think it gets the hate and not Zelda Triforce Heroes? I feel like there wasn't well, that much of a backlash there is, it. There are core Zelda games coming, and there are mm. core Zelda games that have released recently, but there, we've gone a long time without a mm-hmm. good core 
even like like a good core 3D or even 2D like Metroid game. Like either sort of path it takes. Like it's been a while. It feels ignored. And that's why people are upset. And that's fair enough. Like, yeah. I, I agree with that point. I would love another 2D Metroid game. Well, then we didn't need this argument. So that's, <laughs> that, that was the crux of it. Yeah, so therefore, take Federation Force and throw it in your toilet and let Dan Tech take, take a big old dump on it. And then we can call it a day. Because there's no way it could possibly be a good game. <laughs> it's, it doesn't matter if it's a good game. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's an insane point. But we don't need to go back to that nonsense. But I feel like, like I would put all the money in my bank account that everybody at Next Level Games would just have loved to make a Metroid Prime game. There was rumored that they were making a Metroid game and they were pulled off to make Luigi's Mansion. By the way, mm-hmm. you mentioned this is the t- team that made like the new Punch-Out and Luigi's Mansion, uh, a bunch of things here and there, the Captain America game that was surprisingly good last oh, generation. Weird, that, yeah. uh, so do you think that with Metroid Experience now, there's any chance that they'd put it towards Metroid NX? The ho- I guess the hope would be like this is their sort of test bed like right. why don't you guys work on a smaller metroid game and then then we can see about making something bigger right you know i mean that's not unreasonable i mean that's kind of what microsoft does with they had like the coalition like why don't you guys remake gears of war and then like move into the big gears of war and why don't you guys remake the original halo and then we'll right. move into a whole new because that's kind of mm-hmm. the bummer with this game is like i'm with you there's some really clever stuff in it i think it controls better than you think it would still mm-hmm. doesn't feel obviously great it's no destiny ladies and gentlemen <laughs> nowhere near it uh <laughs> But the bummer is like just having these smaller environments because the thrill of Metroid, at least for me, I'm a Metroid Prime fan, is just wandering around a larger environment, obviously interconnected worlds, all that stuff. And to have just these smaller environments, does it rob a lot from the Metroid spirit? Yeah, and I mean, that's that's another thing that I, I realized very early on is that a lot of these missions, if not all of these missions, are very linear in structure and not a whole lot of... Ex- like, there's some exploration where you can, like, shoot through a wall and then there's, like, a mod that you can pick up and you can equip those in between uh, levels. But yeah. There's not a ton of exploration. Like you're you're going places, and almost every single room is like a key room to go to in order to progress to the next area. So it's it's not really like oh I I explored this area and found this cool upgrade that I can now have that like I wouldn't have had otherwise. Like there there's some of that, but it, it's really not like the Metroid level of exploration that people have come to expect. The mod stuff is interesting. So yeah, it's different loadouts, there's different secrets mm-hmm. you can find along the way. One of them that they offer you in the beginning, though, it's so good. I can't imagine not using it where it's like, it's called like the lone wolf. Like, hey, if you're uh-huh. playing by yourself, it'll double, double your damage and half your uh, damage received. Mm. Well, it, it, you have to in order to like... But why would you not just use that all the time then? Like, because no mod's going to be more powerful than Because that. if you're playing with friends, it doesn't work. Oh, really? Yeah, it's only oh, if you're playing solo. Oh, I that. Interesting. So okay. that, that's like a thing like, hey, you can now have this. Like, if you're playing, if you want to play alone, this is going to make you so much better and like able to tackle these missions that were really designed for multiple people. Yeah. So who is this game for? Is it for Metroid fans? Is it for people who want just a f- fun little co-op handheld thing? Yeah, I think that's it. Like, it's it's a fun shooter that is on the 3DS. It, it, I mean, it's definitely competent shooting mechanics. Um and Hang on, Dantex eyes bulge like a cartoon wolf when you said competent shooting mechanics. And that has nothing to do with it being a Metroid game or anything like that. It's just 3D, 3DS. I think 3DS competent shooting mechanics, they don't, they don't go together. That's me. what I thought too going in. Competent for the 3DS. Yeah. Is that fair? I would say good for the 3DS. Okay, good for the 3DS and serviceable overall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, pretty much. It feels better to play than Kid Icarus Uprising. Yeah, uh, yeah. Nice. I, I yeah, I would say people who, who want a fun little shooter to like kind of take with them on the go, this is this is something to look into. Yeah.